Hi, Roy here, Yard of Random Books, and working my way through my literal yard of fairly random books. Explanation in the description and in early, earlier videos if you want to know what that's all about. And I've reached probably the one I was most looking forward to, The Purple Pirate by Talbot Mundy. So this book, it used to be purple. It's faded. There's there's a sort of a blushing pink on the on the boards there, uh, and the the spines even paler. Fox to buggery, um, so a battered old copy of an adventure novel from the I'm going to guess and say uh, early thirties. Um, so yeah, Talbot Mundy. Why was I interested in this? I mean, obviously, a book called *The Purple Pirate*. You got to you got to find out what that's all about. But as a fan of Robert E. Howard and particularly his *Conan the Barbarian* stories, sword and sorcery genre in general, I've read a lot about Mundy being an influence on that kind of fiction. So these are adventure stories set in historical times. Um, it's part of his Tross series. So the hero, uh, Tross, he's basically fighting the Romans in a series of novels that cover his life from, I think, in his early sort of 20s. Uh, this is actually the last one, which is a bit unfortunate, not the best place to jump into a series. So I'd read a lot about how Talbot Mundy influence on Robert E. Howard, um, obviously curious. Um, not expecting this to be full on sword and sorcery, but there's kind of mysticism, there's things like second sight and people seeing the future. Um, I gather that Talbot Mundy himself was a um, follower of theosophy, so he would have a belief system that included some esoteric ideas and ancient civilizations and races being being part of uh, part of the sort of history of humanity, which is interesting. So, I I've only just started it. I'm not going to rush through this. I'm going to take my time. It's incredibly vivid. Lots of exciting stuff happening. Uh, like I say, it's coming in at the end of the series, which is a bit unfortunate. I've I've owned tross books before four of them were published as paperbacks in the early 1970s kind of cashing in on the sword and sorcery popularity of conan etc um now where are they wait right there no no i won't yes hang on Yes, Tandem Tross Books. I first got these from a Woolworths shop when Woolworths used to have a, a, a display of paperbacks that cost about five pence. Uh, remaindered books, so I guess Tandem weren't, uh, weren't necessarily getting their getting massive sellers. Um, so, covers by Chris Achilleos, my favourite form of cover, the wraparound cover. Um, always found this tiger looked rather sweet breaking the fourth wall there in the in the um in the gladiatorial arena um yeah Talbot Mundy's towering legendary warrior Tross of Samothrace so here we find him he's talking to Cleopatra there's lots of intrigue He's by this time he's got he owns a ship, he's got lots of followers, including a guy called Connops, who's kind of his loyal, loyal right hand man. So there's there's intrigue, there's you know, who's he gonna side with? How does he keep how does he stay his own man when everybody wants him to sort of be be on be on their side? Um, it's like he's portrayed as being like super competent, not just in combat and as a as a commander in battle but also uh knowing knowing stuff as well you know perhaps a slightly slightly over the top way 
his sort of expertise in every situation. Um, just going to read a bit. Trost made his lee long before nightfall. He hove to three or four cables length from the shore in comparative calm to give the cooks a chance to feed the crew. He was no believer in the Spartan diet that the Romans considered good for deep sea discipline. Full bellies breed few mutinies. The British druids had taught him the secret of clean water casks, purified with charcoal. He had found out for himself the value of dried Arabian apricots and dates to offset the eternal Egyptian eggs and sun-dried meat. He had ample store too of onions, carrots, honey, olive oil, wheat and barley. His cooks were Syrians and his ovens were things of his own invention, fired with charcoal. He knew too the value of song to keep crowded men from thinking about hardships. He carried four bards, bawdy and well-paid rogues with harps. I love the idea of rogues with harps for some reason. Whose business was to improvise new words to ancient songs. They were even allowed to be personal about himself and to put the men's grievances into song, provided they did it humorously. He had learned that good trick from the Northmen, the world's bitterest grumblers, whose schools had an almost unlimited licence to voice the moods of the men, who must die at the word of command. Men die more gallantly, who know that their leader knows their heartaches. So, lots of character building, the ancient world, the historical world, in this, seems like a sort of milieu for endless adventure the way um the way the made up hyborian age does in in robert e howard's stories so i will proceed with this might circle back to it when i've when i've finished it and i based on what i'm seeing in the final part i will eventually get round to reading my um my old paperbacks of the the earlier ones uh, i think there's a publisher that's brought them out now so you can get some a nice uniform edition of Tross novels if you want to if you want to read them yourself um yeah that's all i've got obviously i'm that's that's quite a that's the biggest the biggest of the yard of books so i feel like i've made, been making decent inroads there and having fun as well uh i will i keep promising this yoga book so next time whatever occurs i will talk to you about the the yoga book from the yard of random books okay that's enough see you in a bit bye